The Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verses two to four. I know a man in Christ, who fourteen years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. God knows, was caught up into paradise, and heard inexpressible words, which a man is not permitted to speak. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and all the TV viewers, this is the twenty-second. Session of the sermon series Heaven. At the last session, I spoke to you about the Garden of Eden, where the people who didn't receive human cultivation into spirit will stay forever. The Garden of Eden is so beautiful that the beauty of the earth cannot be compared with its beauty. The people in the Garden of Eden do not know, however, what true happiness, joy, and gratitude is, because they haven't experienced relativity. Unlike those in Eden. We were born in this earth, and we have experienced sorrow, pain, and various sufferings. So, after accepting Jesus Christ, we are able to understand the true value of the happiness and peace that we receive, and how blessed the eternal life in the kingdom of heaven is. So, you can give your heartfelt love and thanks to our Father God for endowing you with everything needed. While enjoying the true happiness and joy of heaven, we will give thanks to our Father God. And we will sing praises to Him and worship Him forever and ever. From this session on, I will discuss the kingdom of heaven with you. I will begin by explaining about paradise in detail. First of all, I will speak about the living environments of each kingdom of heaven and explain what kind of person will enter each kingdom with actual examples. I will give you not only biblical examples but also examples of a few people who were with us at this Manmin Church. I will explain where they have entered in heaven and why they've entered there. Entering heaven is not the work of others, but it's solely up to you. It is the most important thing in our whole lives. Therefore, Father God eagerly wants you to go into heaven and long to enter. So may each of you examine your faith through the messages preached, and may you never fail to enter New Jerusalem. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verses two to four, the Apostle Paul spoke about the kingdom of heaven that he had experienced firsthand. In Scripture, he says, "I know a man in Christ who, fourteen years ago, you know, Apostle Paul is the one who can go to New Jerusalem. Then why did he go to Paradise?" Whether in the body I do not know, or out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a man was caught up to the third heaven, and I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which a man is not permitted to speak. Why did he go to paradise, not New Jerusalem? Well, he went to paradise 14 years ago before he wrote it. By then, he was not qualified to enter New Jerusalem. You may think he was a novice believer or a Christian at the first level of faith. Okay, so that's why he went to paradise. All right. Of the kingdoms of heaven where we will live forever, the apostle Paul was taken up into the third heaven. Among the kingdoms, he went up into paradise. He was caught up into paradise, and even though paradise is the lowest place of heaven, he said that he had heard inexpressible words, which a man is not permitted to speak. Well, if he had explained the situation or you know what he saw, nobody would have understood it. He must have been more severely persecuted. A deacon Stephen said the heaven was open when his spiritual eyes were opened, but then the people around him stoned him to death. Moreover, nowadays when someone is heard to manifest God's power, you know this current generation persecute him. 
I heard Pastor uh, Benny Hinn is condemned by some people as a hypocrisy. And, you know, people persecute him greatly. What about Billy Graham? When he conducted crusade in New York, some people held a picket saying he is a hypocrisy. Many people deny the existence of God. They have knowledge of knowledge, and they have developed great the degree of science and technology, but they live in a world which is full of sin and evil. Then it's not easy to say such things as you know what Apostle Paul said. But since it is the last days, and they don't even correctly understand who God is, even though they say they believe in God, and they believe that you know, they will be saved even though they commit many sins. That's why God gave me the revelations to me so that I could publish books about heaven and hell. God wanted them to repent, turn back, and live a proper believing life after listening to this message or reading those books if they have a heart of goodness and if they truly seek for God. And I will never forget the moment that you know, I received the revelation about heaven. I was so much impressed and touched. I think I have told you this story. It was 1984, and I received this revelation in a house in, in a Gangwon province. It was the house of senior deaconess Vin's uncle, and uh, there was a small attic, and I received the revelation in that attic. And it was so hot, it was in the summer. I think it was June when, you know, when I received the revelation. And the attic was so dirty, and you know, since they were farmers, the attic was filled with you know, many stuff like you know, farming instruments and some stuff like that. So you know, I cleared the spot in the attic, and, and then I sat on a blanket, and I received a revelation like that. There was a you know, small window, and the Han River was seen through it. I went there on Sunday and came back to church on Friday. That was my usual schedule. And then, um, and then usually, you know, the revelation stops on Thursday. But on, thir on the Thursday, God told me not to go back to church, but to fast. You know, coming Saturday was my birthday, but God told me to do, you know, three-day fasting. And God said He would give me revelation about heaven, but I hadn't reached the proper level of the amount of prayer yet. So, you know, if I pray while fasting on my birthday, then God said He will fill the amount. And He said He would give me the revelation about heaven. So, I stay there in the fasting three days. Then starting from Monday, God started to give me the revelation about heaven. And then, you know, I was in ecstasy. Before God gave me the revelation, He said, there was a servant of God who desperately wanted to receive the revelation about heaven. But He couldn't make it. He couldn't make it. But I made it. So, you know, he could give me the revelation. That's what he said before he actually gave me the revelation about heaven. He wanted me to receive the revelation and spread it to people. You know, so I felt like I was flying in the air. I was soaring in the air. I was so much happy and I was full of the Holy Spirit. I started to receive a revelation like this and it was continued until this day. It still continues. How can you not be happy since you received this revelation for free? I tried so hard and prayed so earnestly to receive this kind of revelation. When I was receiving this revelation, the joy and delight was beyond the description. And the feeling has never been forgotten. Please, so please listen to this message with such a feeling, okay? Paradise is the lowest of the heavenly kingdoms, but the beauty of paradise cannot be compared with any beauty of this world. 
as I mentioned before, I will not, you know, it will not be long before God will show you the spiritual realm of the third, I mean, the second kingdom of heaven. It's very near, okay? The time is very near. So, what is the paradise like? Those people who are at the first level of faith will live in paradise forever. The outskirts of paradise is you know, still used as the waiting place of heaven. Most of the people who, haven't, you know, ha who have been saved from the time when our Lord resurrected and ascended into heaven will remain there until the time when the He comes back again to take us home. The people who have accomplished the whole spirit will stay not in paradise, but they will stay in a separate place in New Jerusalem. Those who come to whole spirit do not, you know, have their own mansion in New Jerusalem yet. There is a you know, separate place where such people wait, okay? The number of people, you know, who have been saved since the creation of the whole world is countless, even without considering the number of those who have accomplished the whole spirit. Of course, the number of people who accomplish the whole spirit is very small. These countless souls stay in the outskirts of paradise. So we can guess the entire expanse of paradise is much greater and more vast than we can imagine. Even though this vast paradise is the lowest of the various kingdoms of heaven, it is as clear and beautiful as crystal. All of paradise is so beautiful and full of happiness that there is no place on this earth that can keep, begin to compare with it. The people in the Garden of Eden do not experience God's cultivation of the human spirit, since all of those who have been cultivated on earth will live forever in heaven. Those in paradise feel it with more joy and in contentment than in the Garden of Eden. Now, what is the environment of paradise like? There is something on your screen, okay? Now, paradise is like a vast plain that is full of perfectly landscaped and maintained lawns and beautifully decorated gardens. Numerous angels manage, decorate, and maintain them. The sound of birds singing is so clear and beautiful, and it chimes throughout all of paradise. Those birds look like you know, those of the earth, but they are a slightly larger and they have more beautiful feathers. When they come together and sing, they look so lovely and friendly. The trees and shrubs in the gardens are so fresh and beautiful. Trees and flowers on the earth wither and become decayed with the passing of time. But the trees in paradise always have the green leaves and flowers never wither. When you closely approach the flowers in paradise, they are able to move on their stems as if they were dancing to welcome you and send out specific and sweet aromas opening and closing their flower buds. In paradise, all kinds of fruit trees stand here and there. The fruits are a little bigger, more glittering, and shine you know, more than those of the earth. They look good for food, and you can eat them without having to you know, peel them. It's because there is no harmful dust, nor are there any worms. The people in paradise sit around on the beautiful grass and enjoy happy conversations with each other, eating nice fruit. They look very peaceful and happy. You know, digestion will not be necessary. There is no need of excretion as well. So how easy will it be? You can eat whatever you want to eat. You know, and they are so delicious and they have so rich flavor and smell. No matter how much you eat, <laughs> there will be no overeating. Those of you who enjoy eating in this earth, and we'll have wonderful time in heaven. Me? I don't much enjoy eating. Well, actually, when I was a kid, I ate a lot. When I was an elementary school student, you know, I ate a lot. I always demanded more. One day, uh, my sister-in-law tricked me one day. She hid a small bowl in a bowl, in a rice, you know, in a rice bowl, in a big bowl, and then put rice on top of it. 
So it seemed full of rice, full of rice. And I was so happy to see it. But when I put my spoon in it, I found a small bowl underneath it. So I was so much disappointed. And I refused to eat it. So I had to starve for all day long. So I used to eat like that. But since I met God, there have been so many other things that make me happy. So, you know, I don't enjoy eating now. In addition, various animals peacefully play on the grounds of the vast plain. And among them are lions that can be seen contentedly feeding on the grasses. The lions of paradise are much bigger and greater than those of the earth, but they are never ferocious at all. But they are meek and peaceful instead. Their hair is really clean and smooth. And they actually look you know, quite lovable. You know, animals with meek and gentle characters are welcomed more, right? Some dogs are furious, but they can recognize their owner, so they are okay. But some animals are very furious, you know, ferocious. You know. Who would like them? You know, I told you that you know uh, there are there were four kittens that you know I would like to uh, take two of them to a Gethsemane prayer place. So I took them, and I tried to feed them, but you know they were so you know ferocious. Since they are big, since, you know since they're they, there, there are big dogs in the yard, so I had to put them in a small cage you know, when I wanted to uh, put them outside. You know, dogs were running to do something to them, but the kittens were also in you know, the ferocious. They revealed their sharp teeth and claws. Even when I tried to feed them, they tried to bite me. You know, they tried to bite me. So I had, you know, I had to wear gloves to feed them. Well, they were wild kittens, and... They couldn't hide their natural characters. So the river of the water of life, that is as clean and pure as crystal, runs through the whole of heaven, uh, from the holy city of New Jerusalem and throughout all paradise. The river of the water of life neither evaporates nor does it ever become contaminated. The living water of life comes from the throne of God and revives everything. It you know, represents the heart of our Father God, who is the fountain of the water of life. Furthermore, the heart of God shines dazzlingly and brilliantly. It never blurs and has no darkness at all. It is flawlessly pure and beautiful. It's perfect and complete in everything. The river of the water of life calmly flows throughout the kingdoms of heaven, shining with glittering lights like beautiful jewels, just as the sea reflects the various lights from the sun. It is so beautifully transparent. Nothing on the earth can be compared to it. From the distance, it looks blue. It's very similar to the blue of the Atlantic Ocean or Mediterranean Sea when seen from afar. Beautiful beaches are on both sides of the river of the water of life, and surrounding the beaches are the trees of life bearing 12 kinds of fruit, and there are many, many benches. Did I tell you what the bench is made of? Is it made of wood, stone, or marble, or gold? 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 Mm -mm. No, you're wrong. When did I tell you that they are made of gold? I never told you that they are made of gold. Nod your head if you think I said so. Who is it that, you know, not doing anything? I said, the bench in New Jerusalem is made of gold. But I never said the bench in paradise is also made of gold. You got it now? I don't know what they are made of. I do not know. God didn't tell me about it. 
you know, he didn't tell me. <laughs> How can I ask God what they are made of? <laughs> I cannot tell you what they are made of because I do not know. But surely the bench in New Jerusalem is made of gold. The fruit of the tree of life is much sweeter than any kind of fruit on this earth, and the taste is beyond description with words. When you eat the fruit, it melts away in your mouth like fluffy cotton candy. Now, what are the people of paradise like, and what kind of life do they lead? In heaven, man's hair reaches down to the neck, and women's hair represents the measure of their sanctification and the level of their faith. In New Jerusalem, women's hair reaches down to the base of the spine. So, those ladies who enter whole spirit will wear their hair that reaches down to the base of the, their spine. And those who enter spirit will wear a little bit shorter there, in the shorter hair. The women in paradise have the first level of faith, so they do not have long hair. Their hair is a little longer than men's and almost reaches the shoulder. The people in paradise wear white garments woven into a single piece. They have no adornments in their hair of any kind, no decorations, no brooches, nor do they have any crowns. They fail to receive such rewards because they haven't done anything for the kingdom of God while living on this earth. Some of them have once stored many rewards, but later they destroy them. Let's say there is a man at the second level of faith. But he committed a sin of body that will you know, lead him to death. But somehow, he repented, rendering his heart, turned back, and he's given a faith to lead him to salvation back. And right away, he is called by God. Then he has no reward. So no house to live in heaven. So he goes to paradise. So he becomes just like the thief who was on the side of the Lord when he was crucified. Those who enter the Spirit will never commit sin. But since those at the first, second, or third level of faith are not perfect yet, they always have to awaken. But I can understand those who was once at the third level of faith, but commit sin that will lead them to death after those long years of listening to you know, messages about heaven, hell, and the last judgment day. You know, It was not easy to reach the third level of faith, but how can they collapse all of those at once? Does it make sense to you to collapse such faith and the reward that they have piled up? How can they do that? Therefore, the people in paradise have no reward. They have no personal homes, no crowns, no decorations, nor do they have angels who wait on them. In the 16th session of this sermon series on heaven, with the title of The Living Environment of Heaven, I already explained to you that there is, there is a communal, you know, communal type home where they can rest and they serve and live there. In paradise, there is only the public type housing for personal rest. When you want to take a rest, you can go into rooms in that house and stay for a designated period of time. You know, don't imagine that public house in heaven will be like the, uh, the, the one in this earth, okay? They are so beautiful and well maintained. In the public house are small rooms only for each individual and big rooms for friendly talks. But rooms are not assigned to each individual in paradise and they are not personal possessions. So they are not allowed to decorate the rooms on their own or to occupy them for as long as they want. After they stay and rest for a designated time, they have to vacate them to make room for others. On the other hand, the others have to wait for the rooms to be vacated before entering them. But they serve and understand one another and do not cause discomfort for others. So. They never feel bored or burdened while they are waiting their turn to rest. Everything is run according to prescribed order. So the waiting time is not too long and the waiting place is cozy and comfortable as well. That's why they feel happy at home while they are waiting.
The residents in paradise have no private homes, but instead live in a public building similar to uh, in a public communal type housing. This is the same with the people in the Garden of Eden, but both the residents in paradise and the residents of the Garden of Eden feel a totally different kind of happiness. The residents of in the paradise can call God Father because they have accepted Jesus Christ and received the Holy Spirit. They can enjoy much greater happiness than in the Garden of Eden. How precious and valuable it is to become true children of God who have experienced all things and to lead a religious life by true faith. Even if they live in the public housing of paradise, they are full of joy and contentment in the truth because there is no evil at all and everyone seeks others' benefits in heaven. They never cause troubles or pains to others, but instead they serve each other and love one another. So how happy and joyous they are. They don't have to worry about what to eat, what to wear, and where to sleep and how to live. There are no tears, sorrows, diseases, pains, and there is no death. They are filled with happiness just to reside there. I've told you that once you accomplish heaven in your heart, you will be happy all the time. So please come into spirit and see how happy it is. If you come to whole spirit, you will, be a, you, know, you will be a lot happier. That's because you don't have any conflict in your heart. You don't have any hatred in you. You don't argue with anyone. You don't get angry with anyone. You don't get hurt. You don't have ill feelings whatsoever. So how happy will you be? All you have is love. You are full of hope for heaven and new Jerusalem. Whatever you see or hear makes you happy. You will not speak jokes, but you will speak truth only. You will speak only the good and gentle words, the word that will give others hope and peace and faith in life. All the people who have entered the kingdom of heaven receive their own heavenly ranking according to the measure of their spirit and rewards. That's why even the residents in New Jerusalem are given a different ranking that is exact and precise. This classification of the different ranking is the same in other kingdoms, the third, second, and the first kingdom of heaven as well. Is the ranking given those in paradise, given in the same manner? That's correct, yes. In the same way, each different ranking is given each person and everything is done in the order. But the concept of the ranking in paradise is a little different from that of the other kingdoms of heaven. You know, why? You know, basically, there are too many people. If they are all ranked, then the number will reach even hundreds of millions. How can we rank all those people? That's why they have different kinds of rank. They are not given detailed different rankings, but instead they are categorized into three different groups. They are the higher, middle, and lower groups. The higher group is again divided into three groups, the forefront, the middle, and the rear. It is the same for the middle group, the middle level forefront, the center, and the rear. Therefore, Paradise is divided into three areas according to the residents. The first area is closest to the first kingdom of heaven, and the second area is an intermediate place, and the third area is on the outskirts of paradise. So they are divided into nine different groups. Those who are in the you know, higher groups of paradise, such as the paradise level leaders, take care of the people who are in the middle and lower groups. The people who are leaders in paradise wear clothing that is different from the others and receive the right to enjoy various benefits. Let me give you an example of the benefits that you know, they can receive in paradise. When all the saved people attend the first worship service in New Jerusalem, where Father God will deliver the message, the service will be broadcast live to all other places in heaven. When angels unfold a vast and wide cloth in the sky of paradise, the cloth will become a jumbo screen and the audience will be able to vividly watch the service. 
you know, the screen will be adjusted to their eye level. Okay? The screen will be in the air and the color will be so vivid. When the residents of paradise come together and attend the whole worship service, they will not sit around randomly, but only according to the rankings, higher, middle, and lower groups. Even at the seats in the rear, they can clearly watch the service because the video and audio are so good, but they can watch it more clearly and vividly at the seats in the front. The people who are in the higher group in paradise have the right to use public equipment and to enjoy some benefits ahead of others. The people who enter into paradise receive what is known as shameful salvation. But our Father God pays back those of them who have been faithful on earth with more benefits as rewards. Through this fact, I wish that you will realize how exact the justice of God is and how great His love is. When some benefits are given the people in a higher group in paradise, no one hates or is troubled and hurt because there is no envy or jealousy in heaven. While they have lived on this earth with their level of faith, they would have become you know, jealous and felt troubled if others had received some greater benefits. But those untruths do not remain with them after they enter heaven. So in paradise, when others receive some benefits, others will rejoice. They are all like that in heaven. The same can apply in this world as well. Suppose you come into spirit. You and your co-worker did the same job. But your co-worker was commanded for his job. But you were not, even though you, know, you too did the same job. But still, you will feel happy. Even though your co-worker received commendation for the job that you did also, you are happy because you already entered the Spirit. You are glad that your co-worker is praised. Why is it that? Since you serve him and give him. If you are like this, then you are already in Spirit. If you are so much full of this happiness and delight, then you are in whole spirit. If you can find those who are already in spirit or whole spirit, just ask them whether what I say is true or not. They don't have evil, and they are sanctified and enter the whole spirit. And so, they can have such a heart. How happy will they be? They will be happy and glad to hear others receive the commendation and praise. When others are prosperous, they will be delighted. Now, you are sitting on a pew. Now, a new face comes in and looks for a seat to sit down. Since he cannot find an empty seat, he is about to leave. Now, you enter the Spirit already and see him. What will you do? You will stand up and yield your seat to him. Why? The man looks like a novice Christian or a guest from other church. You are sorry because he doesn't find a seat to sit on. You are worried whether he will not find a seat. So you want to help him sit down. You came early in the morning to sit in front, longing for the word of God. But you want to yield your seat to him. Now, how will you feel? You feel happy. Even though you came early to have a seat in front, you will feel happy because the Holy Spirit is pleased with you. The Holy Spirit will make you feel happy and delightful. You will find a seat in the back or you will go to a different sanctuary. But you will feel happy. This is the heart of goodness. And this is the heart of spirit. And this is the heart of whole spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, some of the leading people in paradise can barely be invited to the events of New Jerusalem. Unless they are invited, 
they would not dare to go into New Jerusalem because there is great difference between the light of glory in New Jerusalem and that of paradise. Even if they dare to go there, they can stay in New Jerusalem only during the decided time and according to precise order. The order is as the follows. The people in the third kingdom will be first to attend, to attend, to enter, to attend, and then the people in the second kingdom. Thirdly, the people in the first kingdom will enter, and lastly, the people from paradise. They will sit in seats according to the order that they are entering the banquet of New Jerusalem. So those from paradise will sit in the seats as they, you know, as the very end. It is so natural for those from paradise to get there last, not only because of the heavenly order, but also because paradise is the most distant from New Jerusalem. They cannot depart in advance, but are allowed to move only during the determined times. No matter how eagerly they want to sit on the frontal seats to see our Father God and the Lord, they cannot move to the more forward seats because of the order given to them. They have to sit in the last seats because of the long distance. But they are happy to look around the holy city of New Jerusalem and enjoy its beauty. In addition, they are joyful and grateful for the invitation to New Jerusalem because of the sweet aroma of New Jerusalem. They cannot forget the aroma when they return home, and it is considered a great honor to tell the others about their visitation to New Jerusalem. From time to time, up to this point, I have explained to you about the life in paradise through the four messages on the life in heaven. Next time, I will speak about a couple of categories of those who enter paradise with real illustrations. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today you've heard about the life and living environments of paradise and appearances of the people therein. In reality, they came very close to failing to receive salvation and they would have been cast into hell and tormented there forever. But instead, they just overcame it and ended up gaining shameful salvation. Those who will dwell in the outskirts of paradise are those who are just saved. They were about to go to hell, but they were just saved. Among our church members, I know one of them who will go to paradise. God told me some members who will be barely saved. God said, their faith is not good enough to be saved. But, you know, since they helped this church greatly in the beginning, God said, He would save him. For those who didn't believe in God throughout their lives and those who said they believe in God at the last time but had their own ways, when they repented at the last moment, our Father God didn't turn His face away from them but recognized it as their faith and saved them. Therefore, you have to understand how great and magical is His unfailing love and mercy even for those who enter paradise is. When they draw their last breath and their spirits leave their bodies, the souls of paradise come to realize the great mercy and unfailing love of God. For this reason, even if the, even if the glory and living environments of paradise are less than in any other heavenly dwelling places, they can give thanks for the facts of their salvation and live in joy and happiness forever and ever there. How much have you realized and kept the amazing love of Father God who laid down His only begotten Son for you. How much have you given thanks to Him? If you truly grasp His love, may all of you fully walk in the light every day and advance toward paradise and the kingdom above and even New Jerusalem. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body 
and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. The work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing power of God. Hallelujah! The Almighty God of love, please lay your hand on all your children and on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleansed with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five viscera and the six entrails, each joint, and all nerves, tissues, and cells. Manifest the power most high of the creation. I command, in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria, and weaknesses, go away. All contagious diseases, go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases, and newly discovered diseases, be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer. AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated discs be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness, and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nerves breakdown, and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the power most high of the creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened, and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, Bless those who are unable to conceive, rejoin broken bones, and make all burnt parts of the body perfect and whole. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan and the ruler of the kingdom of the air go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil spirits, wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging spirits, deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened. Darkness go away. May the light come. Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them strength to call out to you, give them strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them. Answer the desires of their hearts and prayers. Give them faith, hope, and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, 
and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them well. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you whether they eat or drink or whatever they may do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God, I have received his answers, and I have received God's blessing. Father God, thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.